What was the purpose of Elisha's miracle concerning the widow's oil? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of 2 Kings on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. Before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 2 Kings chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went in from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Coming to chapter 4, we turn away for a little bit from the narrative of the Acts of the Kings of Israel and Judah to an extensive look at the career of Elisha, the prophet. Remember, Elisha is the successor to Elijah, one of the most powerful and highly regarded prophets Israel ever had. And so, as his successor, it is good to know a little bit about what Elisha did. So as we read through this chapter, we're going to cross some events that sound awfully familiar if you compare the account of Elijah's life to some of which is found, some of which is found in 1 Kings 17. But even though these events might sound familiar, they are different events occurring at different times and for different reasons. The account that we read of today sounds a lot like the miracle Elijah had performed for the widow of Zarephath in making the flour and oil be able to provide enough food for them and Elijah to last until the famine was over. Zarephath belonged to Sidon, meaning that that miracle didn't even occur among the Israelites. Here in 2 Kings 4, while the miracle was again performed for a widow, she was an Israelite, the wife of one of the prophets who was now deceased. It is interesting to note here while passing by that being a prophet in Israel didn't mean that you remained unmarried and celibate. Samuel, who was, a pro who was the prophet who likely set up the schools of the prophets in Israel, was himself married and had children, and so it's no wonder that the prophets that came after him did as well. Marriage is an honorable thing. It is God-ordained, and so for a man to come along and command that certain ranks of men and women should remain unmarried in order to be more spiritual is sinful. Being a prophet, though, didn't make one wealthy, as at his death this widow came to Elisha with a problem. They had creditors that she couldn't pay, and so her sons were going to have to place themselves into slavery in order to pay the debt. And without her sons to assist her, that meant that this widow who was likely aged at this time, would become destitute herself. And this is the second major difference between 2 Kings 4 and 1 Kings 17 with the widow of Zarephath. Back in 1 Kings 17, the flour and oil were multiplied in order to survive a famine. Here in 2 Kings 4, the oil was multiplied so that it could be sold and the debt repaid without the sons having to become slaves. Notice the widow didn't come to Elisha in order to get Elisha to convince the creditor to forgive the debt without repayment. She didn't come to Elisha asking that he pay the debt. She didn't even come to Elisha seeking permission to not have to repay the debt, a debt strike, if you will. No, she understood that people are to repay their debts, and so came to Elisha seeking a solution. What that solution was, she didn't know when she came, though. Elisha asked her what she had in the house. Why? Because if she had things of value, she would have been told to sell that in order to settle her debts. All that she had was a jar of oil, 
This oil would have likely been anointing oil for use after bathing or to anoint the dead, so perhaps the widow had kept this oil for her own burial. But regardless, she didn't have enough value in oil to repay the debt. Elisha told her to go and borrow empty vessels from everywhere she could find, including her, all her neighbors. She was then to come into her house, shut the door, and along with her sons, pour out the oil she had into empty containers, setting aside the full ones. Now, without a miracle, all she would have been doing is changing the container of oil. She would have no new full containers. But, of course, a miracle was performed, and this jar of oil filled as many containers as had been collected, so many containers that her sons said that they could not find any more. That is when the oil stopped multiplying as God was not going to produce waste. The widow then returned to Elisha, who told her, take all that she had, sell the oil, pay the debt, and be able to live on the rest so her sons could remain free. God provided for this widow, in this case in a miraculous way, but today God still provides for us, though he has not promised to do so by miraculous means. We're to go out and work, and when we do, God blesses the work of our hands. I have known many people throughout the years who labored hard and earned very little, yet were more contented with uh, with what they had and did more good with what little they had than a lot of wealthy people do with their abundance. This widow had faith in God, did what the prophet said, and God blessed the work of her hands. So yes, 2 Kings 4 sounded a lot like 1 Kings 17, but they're different events, not retelling the same event twice. In the next lesson, we're going to begin to see another event that fits the same category, so we hope you return for that. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 to 21, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends, so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.